Oh, I didn't see you there. How's it going? I'm Clint Campbell from the Truth From Stand Deer Hunting Podcast. This is my DIY mobile whitetail hunting crib. Let's check it out. Let's uh, jump outside and I'll show you what I've done to the outside and then we'll jump inside and I will give you the two cent tour. All right, so nothing fancy here on the hitch. This is where it all kind of kind of starts. We have some heat on the inside. I got a double propane kind of set up on the hitch. These are both uh, 20 pound tanks. I believe a 20 pound tank with my heater on low will give me about 110 hours for each one, which is perfect. Chad and I are getting ready to head to Kansas. We got some cold temperatures. We're gonna be living out of this thing for two weeks. So we should have plenty to get us through the uh, Kansas trip and maybe even a little bit more. This is really where I kind of keep anything that I don't want inside the trailer to make sure we try to stay as clean and as organized as possible on a two week trip. It usually turns into a disaster. So things like jacks, chalks, you know, extra predator platforms, extra saddle gear, um, you know, trash bags, things like that all kind of go in here. Things that we're gonna definitely need, but we just don't have room for in the trailer. All that stuff goes there. Let's head to the side here. This originally started off as just a regular six by 10 cargo trailer that I got from my grandfather. It started as something he used for craft working. Um, he got older, was no longer with us. My grandmother wanted to get rid of it. So I took it, gutted it, and just kind of started making it into a, a mobile hunting rig trailer camper type of deal. So the one thing I needed was a window. The, the heater that I have is pretty strong. Um, and so I needed a way to vent some heat also. It's nice just to get a little bit of light. So we put a regular window that would go in an RV uh, on the door. The reason why it went on the door, it was the easiest place for me to install it. That way I didn't have to cut any of like the, uh, any of the support system that was in the, in the walls. Let's head to the back here. There's a couple things I did on the back. So the most recent thing I added here is uh, basically just a vent. This is a roof vent that you would use on a trailer, a camper, a truck, whatever, whatever vehicle you're using that you want to vent heat out of. I put it on the back door because the heater that I have is about 9,000 BTUs, kicks a ton of heat. I'll show you when I get in the inside, but I have a bunk bed in here that I sleep on. And so this back corner is the hottest spot in the entire trailer. So I needed to figure out a way to vent some heat. So I put a vent back here, heat rises. So hopefully this works. This will be the maiden voyage for the vent. Hopefully it does me good. This here essentially is a, a an antenna for the cell booster. So I'm a working guy, like all you guys out there traveling to hunt. Sometimes I want to stay a little longer. Or sometimes I want to get a jump on my trip, like this Kansas trip. I'm able to work remotely from this. As long as I have enough cell signal, I can boost this, get enough cell signal to, to run my laptop, get on Zoom calls, upload podcasts, whatever it is that I need to get done. As long as I have enough power or enough cell signal, I can boost it and be able to work from this thing and stay mobile and stay connected for work and live the DIY whitetail dream. I think that's it for the outside. Let's go ahead and jump on the inside and I'll give you the tour. So when I opened the door, I started with one Molly wall last year. The challenge with a six by 10 is that it's you know, obviously really, really small. Don't have a lot of, you know, not a large footprint. So anything that you can keep up off the ground or um, from sitting in totes or cupboards or things like that is beneficial. So I have two Molly, small pieces of Molly kind of, you know, wall fabric that I placed, one on the door here and one that's by my bed. And this is just really where I keep a bunch of attachments and stuff like that that I might need, whether it's to refill small propane canisters or, you know, what I need to kind of raise or lower the the the, the jacks for the uh, stabilizing the, the trailer, a knife kit for when we kill. So we have some skinning gear and stuff like that, some, some uh, skinning gear bags here. And then this is actually Chad's, I'll show you here in a second, but this is actually Chad's hammock. He sleeps in a hammock when we travel in this thing and I sleep in the bunk. But this was just to kind of keep stuff off the floors and try to keep things organized. Let's hop in. All right, we are now inside the trailer and really this whole thing works because of a couple different pieces that are kind of the strategic kind of pieces to, to make this thing hum. The first thing, the brains of the operation is this solar generator. So when, when I'm out, the way I can get away with being able to travel and work from this thing is to be able to have constant power. A lot of times you're not able to either be at a campsite or the best campsite maybe 40 minutes, an hour away from where you plan to hunt. This, I built it in stealth mode so I could kind of slip into places, maybe always legal, of course, but we do a little stealth camping, you know, slip into places where maybe you don't want to be noticed. Um, and this allows me to do that. I have 
uh, 280 watts of solar power on the roof. Um, that basically all the lines run in here, run into this. This is a Blue Eddy 1500 watt hour solar panel. So plenty of power for two guys to charge phones, laptops, camera batteries, things like that. It's powering the lights right now. This was new for this year. Is uh, Previously I was using some stick up rechargeable lights. Um, this year went to some plug in ones that are all kind of motion sensor operated. So much better lighting in this thing than we had on last year's trip. The other piece that's critical to this is this Dickinson heater. This is actually, but no, this, this is made for, for boat cabins specifically. I looked at a bunch of different options, whether it was a, you know, a diesel fuel heater or a, you know, a different type of propane heater. I, I ended up landing on this one because it's vented. Um, I, there's two vents or there's two pipes inside of this pipe, essentially. There's one for intake for combustion and there's a smaller one or a larger one on the outside actually that is dispersing all the stuff that you don't want to be breathing in. So you don't get any of the humidity buildup and stuff like that you get with like regular wall mounted uh, propane heaters. It's 9,000 watts, has a fan on it so I can plug this in, rock the fan to kind of get the heat circulating. I never really have to run this thing on any more than low, high. This thing will just totally cook you out of this small little, small little trailer. But you know, we've been in this thing down in the 20s and it's been plenty warm, um, even, even to those, you know, those, uh, those low temps. So. The next thing here is just a small little cupboard. Um, holds all my odds and ends, batteries. It's really kind of a charging station. There's a uh, power strip that's mounted up underneath of here that's plugged into the solar generator. And so this is where you'll charge like your GoPro batteries, your camera batteries, um, any of your battery banks that you might take into the timber to make sure you have a charge on a phone if you're gonna be out all day. Um, anything that you might need to plug in kind of usually goes, usually goes here. And then this is basically just where I throw, you know, extra batteries, extra chargers, a small little fan that I use, you know, to kind of try to circulate the air a little bit better in the, in the camper to try to keep it more evenly heated. Um, and then just some cooking stuff, you know, some plates, some bowls, things like that, that all kind of stays in here. What this is, is kind of the brain to the uh, cell extender. This is what allows me to work remotely. The antenna that's back there plugs in here when this thing is on. If I have one bar, I need at least one bar or a faint one bar and it'll give me at least two bars. And then that usually keeps me in service to be able to make phone calls, texts, run my computer, you know, run some Wi-Fi, get on some Zoom calls, whatever I need to do. The next kind of thing that, you know, the hardest part about building this thing was trying to figure out like how I was gonna situate everything to maximize the floor space and keep some open area while being able to kind of sleep comfortably. So this is where I sleep, this is the bed that I built. It's a simple kind of two by fours and three quarter inch plywood bed with a memory foam mattress is essentially all I'm using. Nothing fancy as far as the sleeping bag goes and a pillow. Um, I built it at this height because if I want to work from here, if I need to work from here, this is about how high I'd want a standing desk. So essentially all I need to do is take, move this stuff back, flip this back, and I've got an area here that I can set my laptop and I can work. It's about standing desk height. So that's why I built it the height I built it. All right, so I showed you the vent on the outside where I vent heat out. So when I'm sleeping up in the bed, of course heat rises, it gets captured back in this corner. So the vent I showed you on the outside is right here by my bed. I'll hang a little fan on those hooks that are back there to kind of move some of the air around. I put Velcro over the front. It basically has a metal grid uh, that has holes in it across the, across the, the face of it. It's watertight when you shut it, um, but the holes are big enough to where if you're out in the spring or summer using this thing or whatever, it's gonna let certainly let mosquitoes, you know, insects in. So I took a piece of um, screen and put over the, the front of it. And I also have a screen door that attaches uh, via Velcro outside the main entrance. That way in the spring, whenever I'm out scouting or the summer, when I'm out scouting, I can actually roll in this thing and have it opened up and still be comfortable. So like I said before, Chad sleeps in this hammock. And the reason we went with the hammock is so we would have something that was modular and be able to kind of put away when we wake up in the mornings to keep as much, you know, garbage out of the middle of the, of the camper so we can kind of get, so we can move around. Chad likes to sleep like a vampire too. So this fits him perfectly because he doesn't take up a lot of space when he sleeps. So essentially all I did was put in some E-tracks in here and some rings. And these basically, exi this exists on a carabiner on each end. And so I basically just clip it in on each side. When it's time to go to bed, Chad gets in bed here, lays down on the on the hammock. He sleeps here. I sleep up there. There's plenty of room for me to get out of my bed if I need to take a leak in the middle of the night or whatever the case is, and we're good to go. 
then whenever we get up in the morning, it's easy enough when we're getting ready to go hunt, get dressed. Chad gets up, unclips this, rolls it up, throws it back in that bin that's back there, and it's out of the way, and the camper's back in order. Another new thing for this year, uh, Chad actually picked this up and shipped it to my house. We ran a lot of coolers last year, and it was just too much, and it was getting in the way, and we were making, cooking food in the evenings and stuff like that. So this year, what we did for when we kill, we're, we're assuming we're gonna fill some tags on this trip. We got a freezer, so the plan would be just to go somewhere, stop where we've got some power, plug in, freeze this thing down with whatever we have in it, and then it can sip off the solar generator for however long we need to once everything inside of it's frozen. Right now, it's just used as extra food storage. I've got some water in the bottom of it. Arctic cooler, this is really kind of like my, you know, bin that I just kind of keep whatever in it. It's got a ton of food, snacks, coffee, whatever the case is. That's what stays in that to try to keep it all in one, one place. The other important piece of this thing is this actual uh, Ozonics closet. I'm not a big fan of ozone in the timber, but I do like it whenever I'm on these trips and I can't wash my clothes. I'm out for two weeks. I'm going to get smelly, stinky, even if I'm wearing merino wool. You know, it's going to eventually start to not smell great. So I use this to kind of hold all the camo that I'm going to be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. Anything that is not being worn consistently stays in a bin in my truck. And then if it gets cold and I need to kind of bring in some colder weather gear, the lighter stuff goes into the truck, the heavier stuff goes into the closet, and then I can get up in the morning, get dressed, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Just like on the uh, door, I have a Molly kind of piece of fabric here next to my bed, and that's really just so I could kind of, again, keep stuff up off the ground. Essentially, this is just holding an extra kind of cup right now, but whenever I'm kind of parked and working or whatever, this is this holds my laptop charge here with a with a power strip underneath my bed so i can charge my computer a couple cup holders you know that way we can you know not be setting drinks down or whatever to spill on the floor you can kind of keep them up off the floor put them here this is just a tethered uh, dump pouch that i'm using to kind of hold extra hockey tape or whatever i might need to kind of fix up some gear in the evenings got to have your first aid kit you know always rolling with one of those hopefully we don't have to use that and then this is just a phone holder here that i stick my phone in and so I kind of hang stuff here that I'm going to need to charge at night and be able to easily and quickly get to it. And then just holding drinks and, and extra coffee. So as far as the flooring and like the look of this thing is I, you know, I could have just left it plywood walls and stuff like that, but I wanted it to feel a little bit homey. If I was going to live in this thing a couple weeks out of every year, I wanted it to feel somewhat comfortable. So the walls are just, you know, really thin, you know, wood paneling that looks like pallet wood. Essentially I have, half inch of styrofoam on the walls all the way around and i have an inch of styrofoam in the ceiling and i have an inch of styrofoam underneath or not styrofoam i'm sorry inch of insulation on the floorboard as well tacked up with uh, liquid nails underneath the actual uh the, the floorboard of the of the of the trailer as far as the floor goes i wanted something cheap that i could clean really easily and quickly i mean it's going to get muddy hopefully bloody and so I just wanted something that it wasn't going to matter if it got hurt or I could replace it really easily if I had to. So this is just vinyl peel and stick floor that's made to look like, you know, like a wood floor. It felt campy. It cleans up easily. If it gets muddy, it wipes up easily. If you spill anything on it, it wipes up easily. And so this whole thing was kind of built with the idea in mind to try to reduce as much of the maintenance as possible and have as few things as possible that can actually break that would that would kill a hunt which is why I didn't wire anything into the walls and stuff like that. Everything is kind of run into the generator. The wires are all kind of exposed to where I can get to them and stuff like that. That way, if something breaks, it's built to really just kind of be, if it breaks, it gets thrown away, it gets replaced, and I'm not messing around on a hunt trying to fix things. Two things you need to be able to do, aside from stay out of the weather and stay warm when you're out hunting, is maybe shower every couple days at least, or at least whenever your hunting partner tells you it's time to take a shower. That's about the time it's to, you know it is to take a shower and how I'm essentially eating. So food, calories in, you know, obviously super important when you're out on these trips because you're gonna be grinding, hiking, scouting, hunting. So essentially what I'm using is a jet boil. I'm basically, I'm, I went from kind of pre-making all my meals and freezing them and then heating them up on the trip, which was really kind of a pain in creating a lot more waste and took more time. I moved to all, uh, basically all dehydrated meals. I use Peak Refuel. They just, they're the ones that I prefer. I don't have any dealings with them and just the ones I've kind of I've tried a bunch of different ones and they're the ones that agree the best with me so I do everything with basically with a jet boil I make my coffee in the morning and I have a bowl of oatmeal in the morning 
uh, all from the jet boil, you know, boiling water. And then I eat my dehydrated meal in the evening. And that's essentially how I eat. So there's no fussing with pre-made, you know, pre-made food. To shower is a little trickier. So it takes a couple different pieces. One, I built a DIY shower that is in this briefcase that everything you need from a propane heater to a pump is in here and essentially has a shower head. You pull this out. I basically sit it right here um, and put the, the, the hose, essentially the pump hose into a five gallon kind of jug of water that you would get at a, at a, at a grocery store, like the big five gallon jobbies that you put on top of a, of the water cooler. So this is a, a small pump that's mounted in here. This is actually the propane heater. I have small propane tanks that I use for those. And if I need to refill them, I just refill them off what I have in the hitch. Where I keep the five gallon buckets or the five gallon totes of water, they just ride back here. And I essentially just fill up two of them before the trip. So I essentially have two five gallon bins of water. So 10 gallons to be able to shower. I can usually get about three, maybe four showers out of one five gallon bucket as long as you get wet real quick, lather up fully and then rinse and you're done. So you might be asking, well, how the hell do you shower actually in the camper itself? If it's warm out, I just do it outside in a pair of swimming trunks. If it's cold out, I crank up the heat and I do it here. I'll set up the shower and show you how I actually do that. All right, so this is essentially the shower setup. The shower kind of pump and heater will be sitting there. I'll have the, the handle or the shower head actually with me. I'll drop it down in here. I'll stand in here, hang the shower curtain up on these little hooks that I have here. Make sure the shower curtain's tucked inside the bin all around you. Get wet real quick, lather up. Once you're lathered up, rinse off, grab your towel and you're done. I only do it probably every three days if I have to, only because it is a little bit of a pain to get set up. But if you need a shower, I can take a shower in the camper. Last thing, safety first, carbon monoxide detector. We want to make sure we wake up in the morning so we can go hunt. It's hard to hunt whenever you're sleeping in the dirt. 